Hello everyone, Genesis Rider here with another Genesis Tips and Tricks video. Today I'll be showing you how I play SWAT on a drift. Now, off the start here, before we get into the gameplay, I want to say something about the Battle Rifle versus DMR controversy. I always use DMR on long range maps like Complex, and the Battle Rifle on maps like Adrift and Abandon. Because it's a three shot burst, it's so much easier to get a headshot, especially when you're playing on higher sensitivity. Here I'm playing on 4 sensitivity with my controller configuration set to bumper jumper so I can jump while aiming. Now the reason why I charge down this side hallway is because it gives me the best vantage point. Notice how the enemy is going to be charging from a lower vantage point. That's why you never charge this small hallway on your side. Because guess what? You're going to be coming up these stairways and what are you going to present to the enemy first? Your head, which is never a good idea. So I'm jumping and I'm going to try to pick off this any people coming and I get the first guy. I immediately lift over. Why you always want to lift over at the beginning of the enemy's base is because people might still be here and you can catch them from behind. You're immediately going to want to charge down this side hallway again to try to sweep up any people who are behind. Now how did in the world did I know that guy was there? How did I stop going down the hallway and realize that? Guys, this is a surround sound headset that I'm using, an Astro A40. Okay, this is how useful it is. I can hear that the lift just activated. I can hear that the guy went over the lift. That's how I'm able to determine I need to aim here. Now I'm going to immediately charge up into the attic because why? Because two of my teammates are now here. Right there and down this hallway. So I don't really need to go back there. Now I'm charging through the attics now because not very often do people charge through the attics. Unfortunately, that was not the case there at all. And in meleeing in SWAT, always melee a little bit faster than you might think. Now this is embarrassing on my part. This guy gets a really good shot on me, and I'm not sure how that shot didn't register. That's going to happen to you in SWAT games where shots will not register. Um, if you go back and I, you can watch that in slow motion, I won't do it for you here. But I did hit that guy in the head. And that will happen in SWAT, where shots just don't register. Now I, I see this guy and I quickly try to clean him up. I'm immediately going to push into their attic. Which is a questionable play on my part because two of my teammates are below me. And I end up being cleaned up by a guy shooting right there. Notice what I do here. Am I going to push back out into this hallway after I shot at this guy? No. Because he knows exactly where I'm going to be. And my teammate, obviously to my left, is right there. So I'm not going to push over. I'm going to lift and hope that he doesn't hear me, maybe. Most people don't use surrounds on headset matchmaking. But he gets cleaned up, and I see that by the assist. Another thing, please, to notice right here. Look what I do as I come over the lift. I turn and press forward. At the stick forward on my controller to go forward and begin jumping as many times as possible. Notice how I'm mo keeping my momentum. It would be incredibly hard to hit me in the head unless someone knew already that I was coming across the lift. Notice how I'm always aiming where their head is going to be. The teammate is right behind me. Optimally, this is what you want to do. Notice how my teammate is pushing the halls with me. Okay, but we're still losing by three kills or four kills now. So I'm going to lift over, and he's going to charge the hallway. It's a very good idea. Now, this is a problem in a drift. We're rotating around the map constantly, and we can't seem to really, really find a whole lot of people. All right, Occasionally, one or two guys will pop up, but it's really not a whole lot of substantial kill. It's not getting us anywhere. All right? This is going to happen on you, to you on a drift a lot if you don't know how to play the map. You have to switch your strategy. And this is why I uploaded this video, is because I end up completely modifying my strategy for this for this game. Now I end up getting, I believe, um, one kill here. Now here's the deal. Notice how as soon as I see, as soon as I turn, I kill this guy. All right, I know there's a second guy out there. All right, I know there is. Excuse me. Right there. All right? But I notice also that he just dropped. So I turn around to run back, but look, I see two of my teammates out there. 
on my HUD. There's two of them. So I'm not going to charge that because my teammates are down in that hallway. All right? Well, turns out they completely miss him. And how do I know that? Because I don't hear any firing below me. So I immediately charge this hall, and there he is, just jumping up and down. That's called keeping track of enemies, keeping them in your mind. Okay, where is this guy? I haven't heard any shots yet. Is he still there? You know, we got to check it out. This is a bad play on my part. I accidentally end up falling off the map, a little too eager to jump out and get that kill. Um, that's just a small disadvantage of using Bumper Jumper. Um, this is where I start changing up my strategy. Again, I can hear both those guys coming over the lift. This second guy, too, as well. End up getting some very nice shots. Again, a third guy comes over the lift. I don't know why you'd want to come over the lift that many times. If you see your teammates all charging the lift, never go into the lift. It's a bad idea. Wait until they go over the lift and watch that little blue arrow above their head and see, did they die? You know, is it safe to go over or should I just charge the hallway? Now right here, I, I hear this guy. I hear this guy above me, but I don't know exactly where it is, so I turn to the right, and I end up being killed from the attic, just where I knew he was. I should have followed up my instincts on that one. Again, we're still losing by one kill, so I'm going to try to hang with my teammates here and hold this position. How did I know that guy was in the hall, most likely in the attic? Because he was in the attic when he killed me. So he's charging through the attic. He's running through the attic. So the first thing I want to do is say no. No, dude, you cannot charge through the attics anymore. And mentally, quote, quote, discourage him from going through the attic so that he won't consistently do that. If you're playing against players who know what they're doing, they will almost always charge the attics and never go over the lifts. Okay? That's a thing to notice in SWAT. They will almost never go over the lifts. Now, I hear someone come over the lifts here, but... Turns out there was a guy right behind me. Not exactly sure how my teammates um, missed that guy, but thankfully he does end up being cleaned up. We're still losing by two kills, so I have to pull something out here to try. Again, I'm using the strategy of jumping and pressing forward on my control stick as I come over the lift. This guy's right here missed several shots, and I'm able to clean him up. Hear that guy's footsteps as he comes through the hall. Now, why am I sitting here, okay, looking at the same hallway? Because there's a bright red X on your screen now in matchmaking. There used to, wasn't before the June 3rd update. There now is a bright red X on your screen. So his teammates, the guy I just killed, his teammates are going to be most likely running towards that area because they know his teammates just died. And what's the last place they're going to look? Up. And turns out I end up destroying at least four people. Because they lift over to the red X, and they're, I'm, I'm literally baiting them to the X. This is a consistent strategy that really works in SWAT. Is baiting a red X. Again, they again lift over. There's only one way you're going to be able to make shots like I just made. And that is because I'm using the battle rifle. Notice how I'm sort of flinging my reticle from the left to the right, especially in this this kill right here. I sort of fling my reticle left and right. That's because there's a sticky effect when you're aiming directly at the person. Now here, once again, close range combat, the battle rifle dominates. And so I'm just, now no, notice here, I, I want to I zoom in on this and make sure that you realize exactly why I'm using the battle rifle. A lot of people don't understand this. Right here. All, now, at least one of those three bullets is going to go into his head. You can start pulling the trigger before you're even, even aiming at their head. Right before you aim at your their head, you can pull the trigger and sort of sweep your reticle. Especially when you're close range, this is really useful. And we've definitely pulled away our score here, getting quite a few score. Again, I hear that guy come over the, over the lift, and I'm able to back up and get that kill. Am I going to charge this guy? No, because this guy has no idea where I am. The guy who just killed my teammate has no idea where I am. Now, what am I going to do here? Because I just revealed my location. What am I going to do? Am I going to sit here in the same location? No. I'm going to move positions because he knows where I am now because he can see my bullet traces. 
So I'm going to jump up here on this box. I'm going to go completely opposite direction. His teammate lifts over. His second teammate lifts over. I kill them. And two guys come out of the hallway oblivious. And I end up getting that overkill. Now, the reason why I aim right here is because I think they may be charging on the opposite end of the map. Notice how there's no none of my teammates over there. But there, my teammates are all behind me. Okay? So I'm going to think they spawn over there and then run through that hallway, but that ended up not being the case at all. We have four kills remaining in the game. Again, you can only pull off kills like that with the battle rifle. Typically, it's much harder to, to uh, get very quick kills like that with the DMR. Next kill wins. And again, I use a little jump strategy. And we end up winning that game. Guys, I pulled out 7, 25, 27 kills in that game. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this helped you in your strategy of playing SWAT on a drift and just gave you some tips and tricks to think about. Uh, if you like this video, uh, please give it a like or thumbs up and subscribe for more Halo content. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks.